Hello Proponomics people and welcome to my video from Friday the 1st of March 2024 and today I wanted to use the opportunity to talk about a phenomenon that I've seen building up and I suspect has probably always been there over time um, certainly if we went back years and years you'd see the same thing and that phenomenon is inflation blindness um, I'm terming it and that is effectively people who can't understand can't compute and can't work out how the world works in times of significant inflation. Now, first of all, let's frame this correctly. It's quite understandable, actually, that people would have inflation blindness at this time, because in the UK, the last time of any significant inflation was, of course, in the early 1990s, when we were presided over by a John Major government that surprisingly won an election in 1992 and clung on until 1997. And actually, one of the things on the economic history side that I've done during this whole cycle of the pandemic and my early calls that inflation would be a, a definite outcome of all the stimulus that was pumped into the economy during the pandemic was to look at economic history and times in the past. And of course, recently there's been talk of recession, then there's been we're in a technical recession. Um, and technically, of course, we still are until the figures come out that lift us out of that technical recession, even though many of us are sort of 80 to 90 percent convinced that we're, we're already out of it. But you do need to see the consumption figures to sure to be sure, because consumption is such a big, big part of GDP. And that's obviously what also fell significantly, especially during quarter four of 2023. So inflation blindness. Well, first of all, what is inflation? And again, although this should be relatively easy, sometimes it's a bit misunderstood. It's the rate at which prices are going up. So this is a, the best analogy for this is, is thinking about something like speed and acceleration. So you can still drive quite dangerously in a 30 mile an hour zone if you've got a very fast car and you put your foot flat to the floor and you can get from 0 to 60 in a couple of seconds. You can obviously get to 0 to 30 a lot quicker than that. You wouldn't necessarily be in control of the car because the things that are changing around you, you know, it's that rate of change that you're talking about. Whereas speed is ultimately how far are you, how long does it take you to get to a place? What's the distance? You know, speed equals distance over time. That is the, the difference between those two things. Acceleration is the rate of change of speed. And that's where people, I think, go a bit wrong in times of inflation. They think, oh, inflation's coming down. OK, so prices are still going up then. Right, that, that's correct. Um, that's not the case with energy prices, for example, at the moment, where energy prices are actually coming down. So they are deflating, right? They are disinflating. They are coming down. They're actually physically coming down. Now, obviously, that's not a sustainable situation. But why are they coming down? Because there was a huge bubble upwards when the Ukraine-Russia conflict started. And there was already a bubble upwards because the commodity market and the resource planning in energy was ruined by 2020 because poor decisions were made where people thought that demand would absolutely collapse for a permanent level of time. And instead, in these situations where resource planning takes months or years ahead in advance, it was exactly the same as what happened in some of the commodity markets. They weren't going to produce so much X or Y or Z. That included potentially oil, natural gas, things like that, that then impacted the price of energy and the price of delivery, of course, has also moved upwards. That's a slightly different reasoning. That's because apart from anything else, wages and wage demands and wage expectations have moved upwards because prices were moving upwards. So there's that the notion of the wage price spiral in there. Or you do need to be a bit careful of just talking about theoretical concepts. And that's why I prefer to talk about real world concepts in general. But inflation blindness is this idea that, OK, so let's make a, a really generalistic um, ruling here. So property market, depending on where you are in the UK, is up somewhere between 20 and 25 percent. If we use the 1st of January 2020 as our anchor point for this conversation. Right. So a little bit over four years ago now, um, house prices in the UK as a, an aggregate up somewhere between 20 and 25 percent from that point if we look at the office for national statistics we can also have a, a talk about halifax price index a nationwide index and all the rest of it um is that what really matters you know we have to look at the price of what sells apart from anything else versus remortgages because that's another way in which people access money from property prices moving upwards of course but 20 to 25 percent that's our range right how much are energy prices up well if we looked at the price cap we're going to go down to, I think it's around £1,650. We were at about £1,200, but we'd been at £1,200 or thereabouts for a long time, for most of the 2010s, actually. So, I mean, very little 
um, inflation in energy prices. Um, so again, if you're 1650 from 1200, it's over 25%, but again, it's heading back downwards and it's gonna come under 1600. And guess where we're gonna get to a point roughly in July. And again, it's not set in stone yet because it's too early to set July's energy price cap yet, but roughly it looks like energy might be up about 25%. Once these wage rises that have kicked in for April in the minimum wage and benefits and pensions have kicked in, guess where we're gonna be ending up there? We're ending up in the between 25 and 30% range depending on which one of those uh, those things you're talking about, thanks to the triple lock, thanks to the national minimum wage, the um, the commission pushing for higher and higher wages, of course, so that people could cope with the cost of living crisis. But as I've evidenced previously in videos and pieces that I've written on the blog as well, um, ultimately, that's been, we've been catching up on that side of things since actually late 2022. So we had a bit of a slump. We've been on the way upwards since then. Um, and we've we've passed the point for, in terms of real household disposable income. We've, we've passed the high point that we did start at in Q3 2021 when it started to go um, on the downward slope rather than the upward slope. So this 25%-ish number, plus or minus 5%, keeps on appearing and keeps on appearing. Where's food inflation since then? A little bit higher, actually, because we had points where you know food inflation now is down to 5%. That still makes things 5% more expensive than they were 12 months ago, not congruent with an inflation target. And food inflation is maybe more in the 30% bracket. So that's tougher for people because for the last 70 years, the amount of uh, people's pocket um, disposable income that goes on food has been coming down and down and down and down. It's less than a third of what it was as a percentage in 1950. And this is, you know, a sign of progress, a sign of higher wages, a sign of... Um, us not need to spend so much on what a class does essential goods and therefore spending on discretionary spending as economists would call it has gone upwards since then so food inflation more like 30 or even 35 percent right in that interim period so that's a bit tougher but this anchor 25 percent number is about right now introduce the concept of rent and people for some reason seem to get incredibly upset mostly because it's ideologically driven conversation. The thought that if rent was a thousand and now it's 1250, well, that's an absolute disgrace. Um, how can that possibly be correct? Now, of course, that is a 25% increase. And if you just looked at landlords with leverage and you looked at how much their cost of debt has gone up, and bear in mind, most landlords are using interest only mortgages. So this kind of pointless analogy that, oh, the tenant pays the mortgage, Again, like most of these tropes, it's an inaccuracy. What generally happens is the tenant pays the interest on the mortgage because landlords prefer to use interest-only mortgages and they don't actually have enough cash flow because the margins aren't any good um, and they don't have enough cash flow to pay a repayment mortgage on a property. Those days are long gone. So actually you're looking at the interest that they're servicing. And really, the tenant's paying the bank and the landlord is the custodian. Something goes wrong with that property, with the property market, whatever, the landlord carries the can for all of that then the tenant can walk away. And that's part of the, 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 the deal, right? So there aren't too many people around. And, and even if you were around and active in the early 90s, it's unlikely you had a fantastic handle on the inflation situation back then. The last time we had double digit inflation back in the UK, the last really sustained period of inflation, the decade of inflation would be the 1970s. But again, inflation wasn't particularly well understood. So you can understand that people have been to sleep since then. It's, it's over 30 years since the 90s, since the early 90s. So of course, they're not going to remember inflation particularly well. But they make these vast sweeping statements and generalizations that are just we need to be starting from a base of, look, things have gone up about around about 25 percent plus or minus a bit. So that's where we're starting off right now. If you talk to people about insurance, for example, insurance is a pretty good example at the moment. Car insurance has gone up way more than 25% in that period. It's gone up 50 or 75%. Um, some of that may be to do with insurers wanting more premium for the losses that they had to cover in 2020 and 2021 in different ways. Some of it to do with the fact the market's got harder and their cost of delivery has gone up, not downwards. These things move in cycles. Property insurance inflated very, very little. In fact, it was mostly coming down. It was disinflating in the 90, in the 2010s. So of course, cyclical movements, these things happen. There will be a bubble. There will be more competition. There won't be these giant losses. Although of course, global warming is having an impact as floods get worse and flood defenses are not well funded and local authorities have cut gully sweeping and all the rest of this sort of stuff that's causing people problems. But that's the concept of inflation blindness.